So I have to make a quick apology here, ladies and gentlemen, before we get on with the video, because it was very ignorant of me to believe that the UK education system was nowhere near the levels of woke insanity of the US education system. But from what I've just seen over the last few days, oh, we are ever, ever so close. As we all know, universities are home to the large majority of a younger generation, right? So as the years go by, the levels of common sense just get drastically, drastically lower. And I know you're sat there saying, wait, Josh, aren't you part of the younger generation? Hey, listen, if we can all identify as giraffes now, I identify as my new generation, okay? My own generation with room for one. Leave me alone. Now this month is Black History Month. For those of you that don't know, and for those of you that do know and are celebrating it, I wish you the best of times and I hope you get everything out of it you want to get out of it. However, you would think people would want everyone involved, right? So then everyone can learn new things. Awareness, new knowledge. No, 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 no. Not here in the UK. Because as I said earlier, ladies and gentlemen, the levels of wokeness is rising. Even as I speak right now, it is rising. And our first stop out of all the universities we're going to be taking a look at is the University of Westminster. And I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, please, for me, buckle up, okay? Because it's bad. Segregation row breaks out after student union bans white students from Black History Month events. The University of Westminster Student Union told students that some events will be reserved for black students to encourage a safe space for discussions and honest conversations. Well then, that is... That is interesting. So let's take the movement Black Lives Matter and Black History Month and join them together, those things that both need participation from white people to get it out there as the norm thing so more people can learn about things and it can be accepted by everybody and people not <coughs> what? scoff at it when it's mentioned. They have now banned white people from participating in Black History Month events. It's not, uh, this writes itself. They've done this and used the excuse of creating a safe space to have safe conversations, which means, which means by the way, they're really scared of people saying something they're all going to disagree with because it's just going to end in tears for everybody. <laughs> the funny thing is I just want to flip this for about five seconds and you all know where I'm going with this. Imagine if there was another university that was holding an event and sent out an email to people saying, wait, hold on. You know, some of these events are going to be strictly for white people. The uproar would be insane. I actually wouldn't be surprised if buildings started burning again. And you know it's true. And no, oh, it doesn't. It doesn't stop there. Because the Daily Mail, granted not the best publication by any means whatsoever, have conducted their own investigation nonetheless and came to the conclusion that academics, uh, well, have been hijacked by the woke brigade. And for the first time in 25 years, I find myself agreeing with the Daily Mail. <laughs> That's when you know the world is truly ending. But I won't lie to you, some of their findings truly do concern me because from my point of view, it kind of looks like universities now are raising a generation of woke snowflakes and telling them, hey, listen, being straight is not okay anymore. I was literally talking about this a few days ago. I was literally saying this is going on right now. These very same people are gonna get into high positions of power and when they see something on the internet they don't like, they're gonna be like, uh, oh, can we ban this video? But enough of that. Enough Enough of that, enough of me going on and on and on. I'm sure you all want to see what the Daily Mail found in their investigation. Remember that buckle I was talking about? Please keep it on. Because now we move from the University of Westminster all the way to Oxbridge because Oxbridge students who are paying annual tuition fees of almost £10,000 to ensure this dogma being introduced to the lecture hall must attend compulsory anti-racism workshops despite strong evidence the courses don't even work. Now before we go on any further, I highly recommend you go and read Douglas Murray's book War on the West because in this book he talks a lot about anti-racism being taught in schools and even even workplaces and in some cases a lot of cases it's not anti-racism being taught it's basically a how to be anti-white now I ain't got no problem whatsoever with schools universities workplaces teaching people that racism is bad and how terrible it is but what I do have a problem with and I'm sure many other people do as well is when you're teaching this anti-racism thing but then slotting in things like uh, how to be anti-white because I think anybody with a normal functioning brain no matter what race you are can tell that should not be being taught. But if you thought anything I said up until this point was interesting, controversial, and universities should not be including this in their 60K scam, then uh, please, 
<laughs> don't get ahead of yourself because it gets extremely worse. As we all know, as time goes on, any word or anything related to the male gender is being abolished and rewritten to the point where I'm actually surprised we haven't uh, got rid of a men and replaced it with a woman. But if we do, if we do, I can assure you now the universities of Bristol and Nottingham, well, they will be right behind it because these universities took it upon themselves and used their precious time which clearly they've got way too much of to ban the words such as mankind and manelial to avoid causing offense while words like manpower are being replaced with workforce oh really well done you. At Bristol, students and faculty have allegedly been told to replace the word manning, oh, I can't imagine why, with station, while able-bodied people should now be called non-disabled. What? Like I said, man, am I even allowed to say that? Like I said, woman, well, anything that is to do with the male gender, whether it be word or phrases or whatever, you name it, is being abolished, it's being rewritten, because if you didn't know, if you didn't know the male presence, the masculine presence, it's just so terrifying. I've actually come up with a new idea, right? Just on this spot, we should abolish everybody with no common sense. I actually think that would solve all the world's problems. Don't look at me as a savior, right? Okay. <sighs> oh, you, you thought I was done. Oh, no, 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 no. So far, we pretty much discussed every woke category, right? We've discussed gender, race, disabilities, but there's one thing we have left out, and that's the new thing, the new thing that everybody's talking about that I so can't get my head around, is a being ageist or ageism. If I'm 25 and I don't understand this nonsense, how would you exp Anyway, let's take a look. Our last and final stop is at the University of Manchester, and I'm so glad I'm stopping here because this university is so far up the country, if we went anywhere else, it would get worse. <laughs> but the University of Manchester, nonetheless, has told its staff not to call over 60s elderly or pensioner because terms are ageist and they should refer to them as mature. <laughs> individuals or older people instead. So I'm announcing this now, ladies and gentlemen, if I ever get the train to Manchester and I'm taking all of you with me, I'm going to make it my mission to call every single older person a pensioner or an older person. Well, wait, was that even, I don't even know what. <laughs> they get pensions, they're called pensioners. What, what else do you want me to call them? No, <laughs> well, that's completely throwing me off. <laughs> pension. We can't call the pensions anymore. But ladies and gentlemen, this is how the dreaded woke agenda will stay for the rest of time. Because when you teach in nurseries, primary schools, uh, schools, high schools, then universities, these people are going to be so heavily indoctrinated that they won't even know how to walk, talk, or even say anything. They'll literally be zombie. You can't say that. And then when they get into their jobs, when they finally get employed, if they get employed, and you speak to them, they will fire you on the spot. How dare you? You must be fired because you don't agree with their opinion, you don't agree with what they say, and maybe you're not a trendy gender at the minute. Okay, just change it and you'll, you'll be fine. But that is the end of the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you have enjoyed today, then please, for me, make sure to leave a like rating. If you're new, hit that big red subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video. But until next time, until I sacrifice myself finding all the woke stuff on the internet, which means I'm encouraging you to stop because I will make the sacrifice, okay? Please, go outside. <laughs> but until next time, it has been your boy JD. I'm out. Peace.